Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is 2 o'clock, but we're going to wait until 2.03, just to give a little bit of time for people to get logged on, and we will get started then. Hi, Jen, you're on mute. Yes, hello, everyone. There you go. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Can see I the... told, every, told everyone we'd start at 203, so. Okay, good stuff. I'll just mute myself in case of any background noise. Okay, we hit the 203 mark. So we'll get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining today's session. My name is Jennifer Bure, and I am the Mobility Transition Project Specialist for AADL, which means that I am working on the transition to Alberta Blue Cross and the Recycle Program. We also have Jennifer Moore, the Director of ADL, on the line, and Chris Perkins, who is the Business Manager, may be joining us in a little bit. So bulletin 125 just was released yesterday uh, and it has the recorded session uh, from session number one that you can listen to uh, and it also has the frequently asked questions and answers for your reference. But I'll just give a quick overview so that if you didn't see session one yet, um, this will all kind of make sense. So the AEDL mainframe is being just decommissioned March 31st, 2022. So that's um, made us have to make some changes. The recycle has been managed, has not been managed well with 27 vendors. So AADL now has two recycle vendors, Eco Medical Calgary and Eco Medical Edmonton. The goal is to better utilize recycle and equi get equipment to clients faster. Assessors as well as authorizers can access the recycle vendor with this new process but authorizers still are responsible for the authorization and the input into the Alberta Blue Cross online health portal. Just to review Recycle In, uh, you, you can start contacting Eco Medical and Eco, or sorry, Eco Medical Edmonton and Calgary uh, by phone or by fax to let them know that there's Recycle In, so clients, vendors, or authorizers can contact them. 
and they will arrange to have it picked up within five business days. Please make sure that you include the client's name, PHN, and date of birth in your message or attached to the equipment. Uh, date of birth is a requirement for all Blue Cross transactions, so we do need that included as well. Just a quick review of how the recycle out process will work. So after you do your assessment, instead of requesting a trial from the vendor, you now will check with recycle vendor uh, utilizing the new generic spec form, which I'll talk about in a minute. If we have something in recycle, then that becomes your trial chair. The difference is that if it works, it can stay with the client. If it doesn't work, uh, you would use that as your assessment chair and figure out what you need and then order it. If there is no chair in Recycle, then you can proceed in trial with the client's vendor of choice as you do now. Please remember to always check client eligibility first. This has not changed, but just a reminder to make sure you check for coverage through another source, that they have a valid personal health number and are a resident of Alberta and check the product consumption. Make sure that you explain to the client the AEDL program, that the, we are a recycle program first, that their client choice of vendor will take place if there is nothing available in recycle. Make sure you explain, explain the cost share, cost share exemption program that 25% of the cost to a maximum of $500 per family per benefit year is required. Uh, so with their new recycle, uh, their 25% will, costs, will be less costly than ordering new. Make sure you go over that if there's any upgrades, that would be the client's cost and that they understand the quantity and frequency limits. Those are based on the equipment's um, expected to be to last that duration of the EQ and uh, the quantity and frequency limit. And then explaining the timeline. So if they trial a recycle chair and it works, they can keep it. If they end up going new, then they go through the trial, ordering, delivery, and follow up. So you need to make sure you do a comprehensive assessment, and this assessment must be kept on file. It must include the MAD assessment, measurements, their mobility and range of motion, and the environment. Then you would also complete a generic spec form uh, with your assessment that you would submit to the recycle vendor. And I'll go through that in a minute. Always make sure you check the APL. Uh, next Tuesday, November 30th, I'm actually going to be going over the APLs in a little more detail. But you need to make sure that you know the APL and that you know the equipment. Let your manager know if training or more info, information sessions would be useful and arrangements may be made with the manufacturers or vendors for product knowledge sessions. This is an example of the generic spec form. There's actually two different forms. There's one for wheelchairs. And then there's one for large equipment, which would be for lifts and pediatric standing frames and walkers. And I'll go through each section in more detail. So I know this is hard to read. So I'll go through each one so you can see it nice and close. So the top section here in the top left, you can see there's a fax number for Calgary and Edmonton. These are specific fax numbers to access the recycle pool. So these are not the same numbers that you use for recycle in or just contacting eco for anything else. These are desi designated numbers for this process. Please make sure that you include the date of birth along with the other client information. Again, like I said, Blue Cross requires date of birth for all of their transactions. So we need to make sure we include that. And then you can choose to have your equipment delivered to wherever you want. So it can be to the client's home, to the facility, maybe you want it to go to the rehab department or the home care office or directly to seating clinic. So those are options that you can circle if you want them to go there. Make sure that if you have an assessor involved that you include their number here. Uh, but if you are the assessor, make sure you have the authorizer number there as well.
The next session section is for internal transfers, palliative and recycle only. So these, these are just check boxes that you would check uh, for us to make sure that we address these issues. Uh, so for pall palliative and recycle only, uh, palliative we will definitely process, uh, they will jump the line to process faster. And recycle only, we will continue to search the recycle pool on a regular basis to make sure we find something in the recycle pool. And then if you're doing an internal transfer, you, I'll go into more detail about how to do an internal transfer, but this is the section in the form that you would use. Then you have your basic measurements. Oh, I didn't mention at the beginning, please make sure to put any questions in the chat box and we will get to as many questions as we can at the end of the session. Uh, and if we don't get to all the questions, we'll definitely have upcoming FAQ document that will include everything. So the basic measurements, you would choose your preferred make and model and then your second choice. And then you need to make sure that you have the seat width. The seat width, seat depth, back height, seat to floor height, the wheel size, armrest style, the footrest degree, and brakes. For hand rims, if it doesn't matter, you can either just check off both or leave it blank, um, and then it'll come with whatever happens to be on that chair. Then you would include the caster size or width size. If you are okay with a couple of choices, go ahead and circle a couple. Uh, so that we can match it up with the, with different chairs. Foot plates, again, if you don't know which one you want or it doesn't matter, you can either check off both or neither. Then check off your footrest choices and then the back canes. And then in the next section, we just ask for some basic information about the client, so their weight, the back of the knee to heel measurement. Make sure when you're measuring for seat to floor height, that you're not only looking at that measurement, but also including the height of the cushion and the client's favorite shoe, which can determine a different length that you may require. And then you can include whether they're an arm or a foot propeller. And then at the bottom of the page are the options that you can choose. I wanna just talk specifically about a few of them. For the adjustable axle plate, please make sure you only order this if it's necessary for your client on this generic spec form. When you order new, please check it off because it's a free option and it just makes our chairs that much more flexible. But when you're ordering through Recycle, uh, you must only order it if the client actually needs it. Okay, so when you order new, it's a free add-on, please check it off. But for this form, you wouldn't check it off unless it's required. For the angle adjustable foot plates, you must only order this if it's necessary, whether you're ordering through Recycle or ordering new. This is not a free item, and so uh, it shouldn't be ordered if it's not required. So please make sure that you're not checking this off because you want to have that flexibility with the chair. If the client doesn't need it, you shouldn't be ordering it. For angle adjustable back canes, same things as the axle plate. Uh, like when you order new, it's a free option, please order it. It does make our chairs more flexible, but when you're ordering through Recycle, you need to make sure that you only order it if the client needs it, okay? If they need it, please check it off, but don't just automatically check it off if it's not required. And I think everything else is pretty much uh, self-explanatory. If you don't care which armrest you get, then you don't need to check off one of these. But if you do want a specific type of armrest, whether flip back or T-arm or wraparound, please make sure that you check that off. And I think everything else is there. So you would just check off all the uh, options that you require. If we've missed something or you want to describe it in a little more detail, you can please put that in the other section or in the comments on the bottom. Jen, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we're getting a lot of messages that the sound quality is cutting in and out. Um, I'm hearing you fine, but I'm wondering if it might be just a couple of other folks who are having difficulty. Hmm. Uh, okay, I'm just I'm not sure what I can do about that. There's I'll, much uh, you can do. <laughs> I'll adjust my headset and just uh, try again. Hopefully that works a bit better. Okay. And then there's yeah. um, 
really quickly while you're there, uh, Anne is asking, can you repeat which ones we should check off if it's a new chair order? Oh, everybody, yeah, I'm getting lots of I can hear you clearly. So I think it might just be individuals who are struggling to hear you. Okay, so I did adjust my headset, so maybe that helped, but okay, I'll just review the, uh, for the adjustable axle plate and the adjustable back canes, when you order new, please check off those boxes because they are free and you can automatically, like that just makes our chairs that much more recyclable down the road. So whether your client needs them or not, you can check them off on new. But when you're filling out this form, please don't fill out those unless your client actually needs them because a lot of our chairs don't have those items. Uh, so please make sure that you don't check it off on this form when you're looking for recycle. Uh, the adjustable foot plates, you should not be ordering that whether it's new or on recycle unless the client needs it because that is not a free option. And so we shouldn't be paying for things that clients don't need. So you would fill out that form and you would submit it to ECO. They will search the recycle pool. Uh, they use the same parameters to search uh, currently that ADL uses. So we would look by the category number and the features and options. So we would, we would match the size and features that you need on your chair, but we may substitute a make and model. The recycle vendor will respond within two days and they will tell you yes and give you three up to three choices uh, that may be available, or they will tell you no, there is nothing available based on specifications provided. So the no response will be provided in writing so that it may be submitted on the Alberta Blue Cross online health portal as supporting documentation to authorize and order new, and that's a requirement. I know this is hard to read, but this is just a sample of the flow charts that will be in our manual. So you will be able to see the process that you need to go through uh, to order the equipment. So it, it all will be there for you. So if you get response that yes, there is something available in Recycle, uh, like I say, it may be an exact match or you'll have a selection of choices to make. Comparable substitutes are expected to be acceptable. And that's our policy always has been. And if you're not wanting to choose, if you don't like the choices that you've been given, then you will have to give rationale to AADL for why uh, you don't want it. So in ABC, you need to sort of think of authorizations a little bit different than what we currently do. So right now, when you submit a 1250, 1251, the authorization is also like an order. You're putting in everything you need regarding that equipment so that you can order it as well. But in ABC, an authorization is simply verifying that the client needs this equipment and is approved. So after you do a, your assessments and you determine that this client needs a wheelchair, you got the first step done. And then once we've determined whether or not it's gonna come through recycle or whether you're gonna go new, that would be your authorization type. So if we do have something in recycle, you would do an authorization for a recycle chair. The details of that chair all come later but the auth actual authorization just simply tells you, uh, verifies that you have been approved for a recycle wheelchair. Like I said, these flow charts will be available in the updated manuals. They're not out yet, but they will be. Uh, and remember the specific information regarding the process of going through ordering through recycle was all provided in session one. So there is the recording of session one on bulletin 125 that was just released yesterday. And it also gives you, so it gives you a link to the session and it also gives you a Q&A document that you can use for reference. So the client gets the chair and then you assess them with the equipment. The difference here is, is that when you trial them and it works, the client can keep it. But you will have 90 days to make any adjustments or changes with the recycle vendor. 
So once you get the chair delivered uh, and you do need to make some adjustments, you can make those without having to do any more paperwork or anything else. You still just work off that same authorization with the recycle vendor. If the chair does not work, then you would just use that chair as your trial chair and assess the client and figure out what they do need. If recycle is trialed again, you, uh, you can still use that same authorization. If you get back from the recycle vendor that no, there isn't anything available, then you can go ahead and order new. So this process is now just between the authorizer, the client and the preferred vendor. AEDL does not oversee this process anymore. So you would complete your specs and the costs and figure out the upgrades. And then you would authorize, do an authorization with Alberta Blue Cross for a new wheelchair. I'll talk more about that a little bit more in a bit. And you would also have to upload that confirmation from the recycle vendor that equipment is not available in recycle. So just a little bit more about uh, Blue Cross authorizations. So as I mentioned, there's different types of authorizations that you would, you would need to submit. So there's recycled chairs, there's category A, which includes tilt and space chairs. There's category A heavy duty high weight, category A tilt and space base only. So those are the chairs that don't come with the back and headrest and they're primarily used for seating clinic. Then you have category B, C and grants. So those are all different types of authorizations. So you would assess your client, determine which authorization is correct for them. You would upload that with the, or you would submit that with your uploading the client declaration. Then you also need to upload the appropriate eligibility summary form. And there's now, instead of just the one form that we used to have, there are now different forms for uh, different categories. I'll just review those. So there's actually gonna be six new forms. So I'll show these in a little bit more detail, but just so you can see, uh, there is one for category A, uh, category A high weight, category A tilt and space, base only. And then there's also category B, category C, and then the grants. So the questions that they ask are specific to that type of chair, as opposed to just being sort of generic, like the old one used to be. So just a little bit more detail on the category A one. So this would be for a category A, like a standard wheelchair or a tilt in space with the headrest and back or a recliner. You would just check off these uh, uh, questions. It's just, some of them are just for reminders. And then any options that you need to justify are also on here as well. For the grant chair, this used to be called a client declaration for an upgrade or a grant chair. So we changed that name because it was confusing with the client declaration that you have to submit with every authorization. So now it's set up like an eligibility form. You would use this for category A grant, B or D grants. But it looks very similar to the other form that we used to have. The same questions are here. And this is a form that the client actually has to sign because they're agreeing to be responsible for that chair for at least five years, uh, they need to sign and understand that. So you need to make sure you get their signature on this when you upload it to ABC. So just how to do an internal transfer, uh, their authorizer's role, it's, it's two steps. So because AEDL is no longer managing the database, uh, Ecomedical is now managing that for us. We need them to make sure that we recycle the equipment in and recycle the equipment out all on paper so that we know who it was coming from and who it's going to. So you would fill out the generic spec form at the top of the form with the client information of the client that is receiving the chair. And then you'd fill out that section for internal transfer and include the serial number that you're providing. Then on the bottom of the page for comments, you would include the previous client's name, PHN and date of birth. The second thing you need to do is also submit an authorization onto Blue Cross. 
and this would be specifically for an internal transfer and this would be the for the client that's receiving the equipment and it's a really quick process so two steps to do an internal transfer if you're ordering beds uh, the requirement for beds through AADL are, are that the client is uh, in bed 80 percent of the time or is palliative Please make sure that you review the APL for sizes and options that are available. And you would submit your authorization to ABC just for a bed, not like uh, wheelchairs where it's recycle or new. This one would just be for the bed. Then the bed depot actually determines whether or not it'll come from recycle or new. And for lifts, pediatric walkers and standers, this would be the other generic spec form that you would use for large equipment and we would check recycle first like you do with wheelchairs and if the trial works then the client would be able to keep it if there is no equipment available in recycle then you would go through your client's preferred vendor and trial as you do now like i said the authorization for beds like for beds the authorization whether new or recycle would be for the equipment itself so um, it's not new or recycle like wheelchairs. It would just be for the lift and the specific product that you're ordering. Then the claim would be uh, either by the recycle vendor or the preferred vendor. So they would go off the same authorization. For category B and C chairs, they still need to be returned to AADL as they are the property of the government when the client no longer needs them. Um, we can go through recycle if the cl client requests that, but otherwise category B and C and grants will just be uh, go through uh, through the client's preferred vendor and they don't go through recycle. The client, the grant chair is owned by the client, so it is not returned. But you still need to fill out the client declaration and the correct eligibility summary form for all three of those types. So just to review again, you do your assessment, you can do your authorization, you've determined from your assessment that the client needs, say, a category B chair, you can do that authorization for that category B chair, and then proceed with your preferred vendor for the trial and the order. The claim, when the vendor actually does the claim, that's when the specifics of what was actually chosen are detailed. Next Tuesday, November 30th at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., I will be doing another session on the approved product lists. Please refer to Bulletin 120 again for the links to that session, those sessions as well. I'll just be talking about the changes to the LP, APL format and how it works with coordination with Alberta Blue Cross. Just some upcoming dates that are important. As I mentioned, next Tuesday, uh, Bulletin 120 has the links. December 13th, ABC will be doing a session on a full demonstration on the online health portal. And Bulletin 124 has the links for those sessions. They just did their session on November 15th, just kind of giving an overview of the process. And Bulletin 124 uh, also has a link for you to review that if you weren't able to see it. And it also has uh, Q and A's from that session. From December 6th to January 21st, we will be doing a pilot of these programs. So we have a few authorizers and vendors that have volunteered to be part of that pilot. On January 4th, this is an important date. That is when all 1250s and 1251s must be postmarked so that we can get um, it has time to get through the mail get to AADL and have us time to process it uh, before we go into blackout so when we go into blackout which is january 16th to 30th there will be no ability to do any authorizations or claims on the abc, ABC system or the AADL system so we did that blackout the same for benchmark and then January 31st, we go live.
And that is the end of the presentation. So just let me switch out of this and I will get to the chat box and start answering questions. So just give me a minute, continue putting questions in the chat box. Okay, just need to back up here. If we don't have time to get to all your questions, like I said, we will have any of the upcoming information will be included in upcoming bulletins with the links. So if you haven't received a new bulletin, then just wait for that to come out to get the links. Um, is there, okay, so I just found the first question, I hope. Um, is there a time limit for how long AEDL will check the recycle pool for recycle only, only request? Um, no, I believe that we will continue to check uh, them up to a year. <laughs> um, so again, that's something that you can review with your clients and how long are they willing to wait um, to see if something comes up in recycle. Uh, so I think we give it a year unless we hear otherwise. If the first trial doesn't work, do we second through the recycle? Do we second through? <laughs> okay. Um, so I think that's saying, so you get the first chair through the recycle pool. If it doesn't work and you can't make adjustments to that chair to make it work, uh, which you have the 90 days to try to figure out how you can do that. So even if parts need to be changed or adjustments need to be made, uh, that can all be done with the recycle vendor to set that chair up. But if you have determined that that chair is not going to work, then use it as your trial chair and figure out what you do need for that client. And then you would start the process again, requesting another chair through the recycle. And at that point, if there's nothing available in recycle, then you'll be rooted towards new. How soon, sorry, how soon would we know whether the wheelchair is available in the recycle pool? Would this form be made available online or on printout format? So it will be available as a fillable document on the Blue Cross website, but not until January, uh, unless you're part of the pilot. Um, and the recycle vendor will let you know within two days whether or not there's anything available. Jen? Yep. Um, there, I think we you hopped over a few questions. I'm not sure where you're oh, at. I? Um, there's one um, from AAC. Do we still have to make sure the client's weight is stable minimum 90 days when going through recycle? Okay, yeah, I found where you are. So, um, okay. yes, the client's condition and weight need to be stable for three months before you order any equipment. The equipment is supposed to be lasting long term. So, if they're not stable, then you know we may have changes in the near future. So, you do need to make sure that they are stable before you order, whether it's recycle or new. What are the levels of heavy duty defined as? So there's the heavy duty chairs that have the packages that you can add to, or there's some heavy duty chairs that already come up set, come set up as heavy duty. And then there's also the high weight chairs, which we currently have on our APL. So, APL. so they're divided up as heavy duty or high weight. And all the information is on the APL with the guidelines for the weight restrictions. What if the client requires an oxygen tank six months after receiving a recycle? How do we go about that? Uh, so that would be uh, an option that you can add uh, through um, at any time. I'm just trying to think whether or not it would be an authorization or whether the vendor can do a direct, uh, can bill it directly. I will have to check that for you. Because uh, I don't think you need, there isn't a specific authorization for oxygen tanks. Sorry, I'm talking out, thinking out loud here. <laughs> so, um, so the vendor would be able to add that and claim against that original order for that. 
His clinical justification needed for these options, adjustable foot plates, adjustable back canes. So adjustable foot plates do require clinical justification. That's on our eligibility form and always has been. Um, so you do need to have that clinical justification. Don't order it if your client does not need it. It is a, a, a cost um, for to the program. Uh, for adjustable back canes, don't order it if your client doesn't need it when you're going through recycle. Uh, but you don't need to clinically justify that to us. We don't need we don't need to know that. And as I said, if you're ordering new, uh, go ahead and check that box off because it is free. Can you repeat which ones you should check off if it's a new chair order? Okay, so I think I just said that. So the axle plate and the adjustable back are free options when you're ordering new. Um, but don't order them on the generic spec to the recycle vendor if they're not required. So I'm glad some of you can hear me good. <laughs> um, what if we specifically don't want something like wraparound armrest? So go ahead and make a comment in the boxes below that that's um, like you're okay with the other two types or whatever, check those off, but you can make a comment to say, we do not want this feature. Uh, the spec form at this time will be on will come on the ABC website and it will be fillable. Okay, so there's lots of options. I'm there's they're asking a, many questions in one here about the axle plate, the foot hangers, the megs, um, type of tilt, that kind of thing. So all of that would be part of your like dynamic and tilt is part of the order. Um, you can make comments in the bottom uh, at the bottom section for other or comment section for sp specifying anything that you want in the features. And you can certainly talk to the recycle vendor as well. So they are, uh, even though you submit this by faxing it to them, you can certainly make a call to them to follow up with your orders. So that's fine. And they will set it up however you request them to set it up. So yes, you would fax the order to ECO. Uh, it's when ECO gets faxes, it's great actually. Their system automatically converts it into an email. Uh, but we need to do fax um, because of privacy issues. So that's unfortunately why faxes have to be used. And those are the numbers specifically on the generic spec form. So they will be directed right to the rate department. Uh, what type of adjustments, changes can be made to a recycle chair within the 90 days? Really anything that can be done. Um, we want to make this right. We want to make um, this as smooth as possible and the client getting what they need as, as quickly as possible. Uh, so really you can make whatever adjustments, changes need to be made um, to make that chair work. What happens if ABC has a different date of birth than AHS? They will not accept the request for equipment. They keep telling us to change the date of birth with AHS, but AHS has the right date of birth. If this has the wrong date of birth, then you're stuck and cannot order anything anytime for the client. Okay, so if there's issues like that um, with Blue Cross, I mean, obviously you wouldn't have a different date of birth. So we will have to address those issues. Um, if you have issues when you're talking to Blue Cross uh, to their call center and you're not getting an answer that's satisfactory, you can certainly ask to speak to a manager uh, so that they can address those issues. And if they aren't able to answer those questions, they will forward the question to a AADL and get the answer for you. Uh, but the communication still will go through Blue Cross. So uh, hopefully that issue can get resolved because that must be frustrating to have a conflict like that. But the Blue Cross system does need date of birth when, um, when you're trying to inquire anything about a client, the patient inquiry screen, when vendors go to claim, they all ask for the client PHN and date of birth. So that's why it's required. At this time, our seating clinic wait list for new assessments is greater than 90 days. If the wheelchair has been delivered to our clinic and the client cannot use the chair until they have been assessed for seating, it has been and has been fabricated, does the client automatically have to keep the chair since it is past the 90 days? So basically the 90 days starts when the chair is delivered. 
And so if it's going directly to the seating clinic, then we would count that as the start of that 90 days. So, um, and certainly we wanna work with the seating clinic to make these work. So if, if something gets delayed for whatever reason uh, because of seating clinic, then just contact AADL and we'll make sure that we adjust that. Because obviously if time's passed and nothing's been able to be done, um, we wanna make sure we can make that work. So we'll work together to make that happen. Who do we give or who do we contact to give rationale to ADL when we do not think the recycle choices would work? So you would contact uh, the manager um, or myself if I'm there um, to explain why you're not wanting to accept a recycle choice. Uh, as the authorizing therapist, would I, I order a trial cushion from the vendor of choice and then request a recycle chair. So yes, um, because cushions are not a recycle item, item, they do not come through the recycle vendor. So you can coordinate getting a cushion trial with the client's preferred vendor um, at the same time that the chair is being sent, the recycle chair is being sent out so that you can see it all together. If Eco is the prefer preferred vendor, then you can get it from them. But if they're not, then you just get it from whoever the preferred vendor is. So you can coordinate that. Why are category B and C chairs not recycled? Um, so they are recycled in, um, but they're not recycled out typically. We tend to not have a lot of B and C chairs in recycle. And because they're so specific to the clients and you do require, um, like it takes a little bit more to get the specifics of what the client needs, then it's just at this time, we're not gonna recycle out category B and C chairs. Uh, like I say, we don't have a lot in recycle anyways. Um, so at this time, we just chose not to put that on the program. But, but like I say, if the client does want to have something come through recycle, uh, then we can certainly pursue that. Um, so, we, we do take the B's and C's back. If they're folding chairs, we may substitute out a category B chair uh, for a category A request. Um, that might be a possibility, so it can be recycled out. And we do get requests for recycle on occasion, so they'll go that way. Um, and we'll see how it goes. If we have a whole bunch of B's and C's out there, you know, then maybe we'll let the authorizers know that we have some to choose from and uh, you would be able to pick through recycle that way. But at this time you would just order new. This is all very fluid and changing as we go along. So <laughs> we're adapting as it goes through. I have a couple of AADL chairs from before I started at this facility that don't have names or PHNs on them. How do I go finding that information? Uh, so if they do have the AADL sticker on them and you do um, so you do know that it's an ADL chair, you can contact ADL uh, and we can look the background information of that previous client. Does the blackout period also apply to urgent palliative beds? Oh, thank you, good question, I forgot to mention that. Um, during the blackout though, we will still accept palliative uh, orders. We can't process them officially during the blackout, but we will make sure that they get ordered uh, and then we will manually, manually um, put them into the system once the Blue Cross system opens on January 31st. So if you do have palliative needs, please make sure you still continue to submit them into AEDL. Probably give us a call so we're aware that it's there and we'll make sure we address it. So cushions, uh, how, what about ordering cushions? Uh, so you would order through the client's preferred vendor. Uh, they also will be ordered though through um, the online portal. So when you're not ordered, but you'll be doing your authorization through the portal. So basically everything that has not been transferred over to Blue Cross yet will be transferred over with this last phase. So seating, wheelchairs, lifts, beds, pediatric recycle. Why is the previous client's information needed for internal transfers? Um, so putting confidential information into another client's record. So yeah, that's a good question. We had that one yesterday as well. Um, so we are taking that away and, and looking at that um, to figure out what options we have uh, because it is confidential information. Um, 
couple of options that pop to mind is maybe you don't need to keep that form, but you print the authorization for the internal recycle. Uh, and that's the form you put on the client's file so that you have record of the internal transfer. Um, or you don't put it on and you phone ECO to let them know that previous in client information. Um, those are just some initial thoughts, but we are we have that question hanging out here. So we are trying to find an, a good answer for that one. If you have any suggestions, let us know. Jen, can I yep. jump in? Yeah, quick so I want to go back, um, take everybody back to the question around the date of birth. Um, Rachel, by the way, who is also on the call flag this. So thank you so much, Rachel. So the date of birth question is that the data that AADL has comes directly from the Alberta Healthcare Insurance Plan. So that is the date of birth on file in the plan for that person. So if AHS has a different date of birth that could very likely be correct and the one on the plan is wrong, which means the source data is incorrect, then that means that the, the person themselves or whoever is managing that person has to go to the plan and get that fixed. Because from their perspective, all of that data flows back and forth as eligibility data, which is totally source data. So if that makes any sense at all um, to everybody on the call, it really is not AADL necessarily. It really is Alberta Health. So if that date of birth is not matching, ABC can't fix it, AADL can't fix it, the person themselves needs to fix it because that data was never entered by AADL. So uh, hopefully that helps to uh, sort that question out a bit better. I was uh, not connecting those dots when that question was being asked. So hope that helps. Thanks for clarifying that. I learned something new today too. <laughs> um, okay. Um, AHS staff can send encrypted emails to email uh, to ECO and they are able to open them. We currently do this. Will we have to fax instead? Um, so for the recycle program, let me just verify that with them. It should be okay to encrypt them if they're able to open them. Um, let me just check that though, to make sure that when it goes through uh, to them, it reaches the right people, that kind of thing. So uh, let me just clarify that and I'll answer it in the Q&A when we get that done. Please confirm which wheelchairs ABC are recycled in and to which vendor, eco or vendor of choice. So all AADL equipment, uh, ABC chairs, um, all lifts, pediatric recycle beds, all need to go back to the recycle vendor, which is eco medical in Calgary or Edmonton. So the other vendors are no longer handling recycle. So as of October 1st, uh, all recycle is being handled by eco medical. If the first trial doesn't work and the client is reimbursed, how does the vendor get paid for that work? So if the, if the first chair doesn't work and, and the second chair isn't available through recycle, uh, then the vendor would give the client the refund for their cost share and they do get paid an assessment fee um, for that chair because they set it up and everything. And so they will get reimbursed for that. Um, and then once, if a chair does go through recycle, then they're paid accordingly. But if it does go through new, they do get compensated for that. I've never seen an ADL definition of stable weight. Does that exist in the manual or are we each use our own clinical reasoning? Um, I mean, stable weight would be that it's not fluctuating over a three month period in any direction. So yeah, use your clinical judgment on that. What is the boundary for Eco Edmonton and Eco Calgary? So Red Deer and everything Red Deer and North is Eco Edmonton and everything south of Red Deer is Eco Calgary. And if you're off to the sides, if you're parallel to Eco, then that would be, sorry, if you're parallel to Red Deer, then that would be Edmonton. 
what do we do with the client who needs a wheelchair but isn't stable? Um, so they would have to make their own arrangements to um, rent a chair um, or get one through a lending pool uh, until they're stable. Uh, if they're really unusual circumstances, um, then you can give ADL a call for us to clarify that. I can't think of anything specific, but if you have some bizarre circumstances, then please let us know. But otherwise, they do need to be stable. Like I say, the, the equipment is meant for long-term use, not short-term. And so when we do pick the equipment, is it is expected to last them for several years. Um, will parts changes still be allowed after six months of receiving a wheelchair? Do those require authorizations or go through the recycle pool? So once the chair is recycled out, then um, all repairs and parts changes go after your 90 days. So you're done dealing with the recycle vendor. All repairs and parts changes would go to the client's preferred vendor. Um, so yeah, and the vendors will have the ability to uh, charge up to a certain limit for repairs and parts changes. And then anything above that, they would require prior approval like they do now, but we did increase our limits. Are we allowed to have more than one chair shipped to us from Recycle when we have requested a trial chair from ECO? So the intention is that you would do your best to assess the client to determine what they need and, and choose one chair from the vendor and then see if that works. So that's the intention. Uh, is there any discussion to move away from faxing and perhaps moving toward online submissions? So yeah, I agree with you totally. Faxing seems so archaic, but um, because of security uh, reasons, um, it is the preferred method. Um, but we are actually in discussions with trying to get uh, online options available. Uh, I just don't have anything more concrete at this point to be able to provide you. Um, but once that happens, we will certainly let you know through a bulletin. How will ECO notify us the recycle options available, phone, fax, or email? So uh, they would let you know via fax um, if you want them to give you a phone call, then that would be an option you can let them know. Um, and if you've given it to them encrypted, once I, once I verify that that's okay to do that that way, um, then they would send an encrypted email back to you. How is the cost sharing determined? If the client is getting a recycled chair, will it be refurbished and then ECO just had to um, had a record of this and will claim it afterward? Uh, so anytime that even now when recycled equipment is sent out or when any equipment, whether it's new or recycled is sent out, the vendor always uh, collects cost share before they refurbish or before they order. Um, so what we suggest is because the Blue Cross system allows you to have an accurate uh, summary of what's actually owed. Uh, so if they are a cost share and they've already contributed towards their cost share amount, the vendor would be able to determine uh, through a predetermination the exact amount that's required for their cost share. Uh, so what they might do is collect a deposit from the client first and then before they order and then when the actual equipment is uh, ready to be delivered then they would collect the, the exact amount that's owed for that cost share amount so that's an option available um, if they if they do collect the cost share first and then two three weeks later when the chair comes in um, if they're ordering new um, and that cost share amount has changed then the vendor would just have to adjust the amount uh, back to the client What if it takes more than 90 days to get parts in to make a chair work? Uh, shipping has been terribly slow. Yeah, we hear that. It's a uh, global problem with shipping. Um, if there is an issue with getting particular parts in, then we would certainly consider that within the 90 days. Um, ECO is set up really well with their parts and they also can access, of course, our entire recycle inventory to access parts from there as well. So often they can get parts through recycle and won't have that issue about having to order. So they should be able to set up chairs uh, a lot quicker and not have to order in parts.
Well, recycle out tilt and space chairs have the standard backs and headrest on them, new or recycle. Um, yes, so if you're ordering the tilt and space with the back and headrest, then they would come with those. Uh, just a note, um, please make sure when you're recycling in your tilt and spaces that you're returning them with the backs and headrests because often they come stripped off uh, and they shouldn't be taken off. They, they are an expensive um, item to have to replace. Uh, so we can just replace the upholstery on them and recycle them back out again. So uh, yes, we would recycle them um, with the headrest and back on them. If you're, but if you're ordering a tilt in space with just the base, then that's what you get, and the chair goes to seating clinic. Will the new forms only be available once ABC goes live, or will they be posted early? I assume those of us on the pilot will have access early. Yes, so anybody on the pilot uh, will have the forms available as of December 6th, um, but and they will be on the ABC website. And then um, for everybody else, they'll be available come January 31st. If recycle wheelchair is returned to our home care office, are there circumstances where home care can keep the wheelchair as a permanent loaner, very old wheelchair, et cetera? So we don't have the permanent loaner program uh, anymore, like we that was years ago. Um, but if you do have a chair that comes back that's very old, that's still in good condition, um, then you can contact AADL and we can look at whether or not uh, it would be something that we could um, assigned to you basically um, and it would become your responsibility so those are options available um, otherwise they are to be returned to AADL but you're right they would either get used for parts or probably uh, used for donation or, or they get surplus so that is something I did mention in session one as well that uh, donations are possible uh, so you can contact us if you do have requests for donation chairs uh, that you can use for assessment or for whatever you need uh, just note that um, we won't be able to address those until the new year just because we're so busy with this transition right now i'm an assessor only with the authorizer at a different facility am i still able to try generic chair or would the authorizer need to submit the request on abc first so no as an as an assessor you can access the recycle pool so you can start that first part, you can fill out the um, generic spec form, submit it into Recycle. Um, if there is something in Recycle, you can pursue getting that chair through Recycle. But if you do need an authorization put in, then your authorizer would have to be involved to put that request into ABC. But you can follow through on that whole process uh, otherwise. Um, thank you for addressing these questions. I'm reading this just because <laughs> it's good to hear. I appreciate that this is a large change and addressing everyone's questions is challenging. So thank you for taking the time. Yes, thank you for your questions. This has been so valuable for all of us. We're learning as well as you are and we're adapting as we go. Um, and so um, we really do want to be um, there for you to support you through this process and answer your questions. Um, and like I say, we'll adapt and change as we need to. Um, so thank you for that. With wheelchairs, do you have to indicate what kind of user the client will be? Occasional, part-time, full-time as we did before, or will that now be included in the cushion authorization? Is that even required anymore? Um, so your wheelchair authorization is simply, like I said, an authorization for whatever chair you've chosen. So a, a recycle chair, a category A chair, a heavy duty chair, those kind of things. Um, the details of that are all, all, all part of your um, process with the client and the vendor. So we don't oversee that anymore. I'm sorry, I'm not sure I can answer the question about a cushion authorization and what's required specifically on the cushion authorization. I do know your assessments need to be on file so that if we follow up with any questions regarding uh, an authorization that you would have the information available if we need to do an audit. Pediatric question, will there be any recycled standards and re standards in recycle that are no longer on the APL? Thinking of Buffalo standards, yeah, we get that request all the time, that are no longer available. Just wondering if ADL has scrapped anything not on the AP, uh, APL. Um, so 
the buffalo is one that I know we still do have in the recycle pool, so it might still be available uh, in special circumstances. I know we have pulled them up, um, but typically anything that is not on our APL anymore is no longer available. Um, so you can contact us directly for those kind of questions. Uh, what about those of us with non-AHS emails? Could we send an encrypted PDF via email to ECO? Um, like I say, I'll double check to make sure that they can accept the recycle searches, the generic spec form through an encrypted email and whether or not those work uh, even when you're not AHS. So I will double check that for you. Can maintenance on AADL wheelchairs still be completed by a vendor of choice? Yes, so all repairs are done through the vendor of choice. So those are not done by the recycle vendor. So you go through the client vendor of choice for all repairs. Do assessors have access to ABC to check their ADL equipment history? If not, does the IVR system still work? Good question. Uh, so no, authorizers are the only ones that have access to the Blue Cross system at this point. Uh, so the authorizers would have to check the history for you. And the IVR system will be going offline come January 1st, 31st, 2022. So you will have to check the patient inquiry screen on the Blue Cross system at that time. Even for now, um, the IVR is still available for recycle, but it is no longer accurate for benchmark items because those have all been transferred over to Blue Cross. So you shouldn't be using the IVR at all for benchmark um, and just using it now until recycle moves over in January. And what step of the process does client pay when using the recycle pool after the trial or before? So uh, this is all in session, the session one, um, recording explains all that in much more detail but just i'll quickly just summarize here that because the client may be able to keep the chair that comes out of recycle uh, we we do require that the authorization goes in first and the client sorry the recycle pool ah, sorry <laughs> my tongue's tied the recycle vendor will collect cost share before they deliver because if they don't, sometimes when equipment gets left with clients and they haven't collected cost share, it's sometimes difficult to get that when they already have the equipment. So they will get cost share up front before they refurbish and deliver the chair. And then, like I say, if that trial doesn't work, um, you, you switch to another chair, um, they can put that towards uh, another chair or they will refund the money if you're going through new after that. Will the two ECOS locations share the pool of equipment or will they only check our own ECO location for an appropriate recycle match? So typically they'll be, they'll be searching their location, but if we do have uh, some of those chairs, uh, like if you have a special request for recycle only, or if it's an, um, an odd size chair or sometimes are really heavy duty chairs, like you're looking for a 26 inch wide or something, then it might be beneficial for us to look across the province. So the database does have everybody, the entire, like both locations on it. So we can search either one, um, but typically we would only search for the location unless it's um, beneficial for us to, to look in both locations. Uh, what about power mobility? Can you review the process of application process, please? Um, yes, I should actually add that to the presentation. Uh, so power mobility is, um, you do not need to go through recycle first. It's basically the same as it is now where you trial through the preferred vendor, client's preferred vendor, and make sure the client is competent and safe with that chair. You would submit your application to Blue Cross and then they, it would, it would go into a pending state and they would forward it to the AEDL manager to adjudicate. And then if it is approved, then AEDL, uh, like Rick, would still at that point look through the recycle pool to see if we do have anything in recycle. And so he would either order through recycle or, or give it to the new vendor, the preferred vendor of choice. So basically the same process except going through Blue Cross. 
Will ECO be contacting the client or the authorizer about the trial wheelchair delivery? The client may want to go with a different vendor for the cushion. Uh, yeah, so you can certainly talk to ECO about delivering. They are to get the, the chair out within 10 business days. Uh, but if you want to delay that forever and for whatever reason to coordinate with when you're available or when you can get the cushion out, those kind of things, you can certainly talk to them to arrange for a different date so that you can line them up better. I'm imagining ECO will be busy with this big change for them too. I know you mentioned for timeline, the response within two days for recycle availability. Is there a timeline for delivering the recycle chair? I think I just answered that. Um, they are expected to get the chair out within 10 days if they have something available. Once That's once everything is confirmed and that we know that we're going with that chair. Oh, we got through the questions. Oh, sorry, it's after three. <laughs> We're just having so much fun. Uh, thank you to everybody uh, for all of your really amazing questions. Uh, wonderful that for the engagement. We really, really appreciate it. And Jen, J Jen B, <laughs> she's uh, colloquially known in AADL, is uh, available for questions. Reach out to her directly if you're, hey, you have questions or concerns. Actually, reach out to any of the three Jens um, if you need to but I really appreciate all your time. Thanks everybody. And thank you, Jen, for this. This was great. Thank you everybody. Yes, appreciate your really good questions and everything will be available on a Q and A in a, in an upcoming bulletin. Okay, thanks everybody. Bye.